Bakely Bake. Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm back again with another video. I'm super excited and a bit scared for some reason. Okay, I'm not scared. I'm just not ready for today's video. It's gonna be long. I'm gonna do like a part one and part two. Um, but anyways, welcome guys. Um, I know you guys have been waiting for this video for the longest time and I've just been like, ah, I'm gonna do the video. I'm gonna do the video and yeah, so the time has come. I'm gonna do it now, still at home, so I have all the time. Okay, I'm wearing one earring and two earrings aside, whatever. <laughs> um, so basically guys, um, the pregnancy journey video that I'm gonna be doing today, um, I'm gonna split it into two, okay? part one and part two so i need to welcome you guys to part one of the pregnancy journey because it's going to be long um because i was writing down notes yesterday here on my phone and just basically being that influence yes <laughs> guys sorry about that um guys oh my sisters are making noise <laughs> Guys, how am I supposed to be serious in this house? Like, yo. Anyways, guys, so today's video I'm gonna divide into three. There's gonna be the first trimester and the second trimester and the third trimester. So today we're doing part one of the pregnancy journey video. Um basically I think we should start now. Not basically, we should start now. Okay, let's start. Um so where do I begin? Okay. I wrote it down guys i just don't come to you and talk i i plan things prior you know um but yeah i do that <laughs> um so caught me here so um for the first trimester name the first three months which was um december jan and feb this is basically what happened um i feel like if you're going to be watching this video you need to go back to um 18 and pregnant video because there i reveal how i told my parents i was pregnant how i found out i was pregnant so you need to watch all of that before you can come here and watch this video okay thank you in advance <laughs> anyway um my sisters guys no so basically, um, okay, after we found out that I was pregnant, um, we, we couldn't like decide on where, on what to do with the pregnancy. So what we did was we just came up with the um, idea of going home for the holidays and then basically thinking about everything and you know planning uh, the whole thing just deciding guys on what we basically gonna do about this pregnancy so we went our separate ways i think this was the same at time and then we went our separate ways he went home i went home and yeah and we just said when we come back jam we're just gonna we're gonna talk about what we were thinking about the whole like december holidays and then basically come up with the decision on what to do you know um so i think that's when the depression started to kick in because i was home i was around my mom Yo. okay um so that's when the depression started to kick in guys because um being at home being around my family and they didn't know nothing i couldn't even tell my own sisters about the whole pregnancy because uh i felt like i was such a disappointment in a way you know and i was super scared because i felt like maybe they were gonna shout or get angry or something i don't know you know but i didn't tell anyone no one knew about the pregnancy then and then what happened was okay i think this is now jan and jan um our relationship with my partner started falling apart like yo we would fight guys like a lot like every day we would fight like a lot lots you know it was bad um 
but yeah that happened and most of the time i used to suspect that he was cheating or something <laughs> because this other time i remember he video called me and he was in the library at school um and then he was sitting next to girls and i was just like oh okay so now you're sitting with girls you don't want to be showing me everywhere i saw somebody's hair yo guys i was super super crazy then okay i'm so crazy <laughs> I'm joking okay i'm crazy but yeah yeah um I, I used to fight him about about that too he was literally like at the library and just sitting around with people um to me he said he didn't know them but in my head then i thought he was lying or something one minute 37 seconds later okay sorry about that um so yeah in my head i was i was thinking that he was cheating on me or something <laughs> so um and then guys um abortion came into the picture you know um we were fighting like a lot like every day now we were fighting and fighting and we just came up with a decision to just you know what let's consider abortion you know so as much as i didn't want to do that but i felt like he wasn't there he wasn't i felt like he was he wasn't going to be there for me um and the baby so i just decided you know what um let's go on with it um i'm gonna find like an abortion clinic a hospital or doctor whatever you know so the first step that i took was i i told my sister and Fondo about the pregnancy we were at zoe's place um in the kitchen zoe wasn't around i think she was sleeping if i'm not mistaken she's always sleeping so um <coughs> <coughs> sorry guys <coughs> something's wrong with my voice so um we were in the kitchen i was sitting on top of the counter and i was just like um no fondo um i'm pregnant and then i broke down like i lost it like i lost it i just cried and then she excuse me she held me and then th that was actually the first time me and fondo had like a sisterly company lovey talk and comforting each other <laughs> kind of vibes but yeah she hugged me and then i felt a bit relieved you know telling somebody from my from my side actually i felt relieved it helped in a way um so i also told her that i want to do the abortion may she please go with me to the hospital and then basically she was just she was just like um I'm not gonna tell you what to do um, to your body. I'm an older sister. I love you, and I'm just gonna be there for you and support you every decision. I'm not gonna judge you. I'm just gonna be there for you. And then I think this was Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, or something when we started this journey because we went to different hospitals and clinics to find like the the right information. So the first time I went to went with um sorry went with um hospital and then when we got there they were just like no i'm way too far they can't help me i must go to city something something hospital in in town though um we went there and then i got there and i met these indian ladies and oh my gosh they were so nice to me you know they asked me why i was doing the abortion um what's going on how's my situation at home and i explained everything to them you know they asked me about my dreams what i what i still want to accomplish in life you know a whole lot of things and we just basically had a talk about the whole situation so um after that they were just like we'll refer you to this clinic um we know the lady we're just gonna ask her to just um make you pay, pay less um so they wrote down the, the information they called her they told her that um uh, a girl is gonna come tomorrow i think it was thursday and then on friday i went to that 
that clinic and then they were just like okay good luck on your journey we wish you the very best you know take care of yourself next time do not make a mistake to get into bed with the guy without condomizing you know just go and prevent or something and then we left like that okay all these okay for two days i was going with nofundo on friday nofundo had to be somewhere else and i just appreciated that she was there for the past two days guys like money transportation and all that she was just there and then excuse me and then friday i had to go alone because nofundo was busy this clinic is thing it's near it's near one hospital like in town though so i got there and I sat in the waiting area um, because I think somebody was still in and I was seeing these girls I think it was a friend there was a girl who's go who was doing or um, in the middle of the whole procedure and then her friend was there just comforting her you know that looked very nice and I was just there alone Not bad. <laughs> for a moment you know but gay um, my turn came and then I walked in and then there was this lady. Honestly, I don't feel like she, she was there there. She she just talked to me. I'm like, okay, what's up? Okay, how far? Um let's see the letter. Showed her the letter. Oh, you that girl. Okay, fine. Um so yeah, basically she opened two big books for me and she's just like, Okay, we're gonna insert this and pump it up and then it's out <laughs> okay it wasn't like that <laughs> but yeah um <clears throat> she showed she showed me everything that the whole procedure and how they're going to be pumping the baby out of me and how it's going to happen basically they're squishing the thingy the baby up guys no oh my gosh i wanted to cry and then she, i was just like okay and then she was just like um since it's friday you're gonna come back um <clears throat> On Monday you know um, she gave me a poem and then she was just like you need to take this poll early in the morning at five o'clock okay? take this pill drink it and and then she was just like you must be here before nine because at nine you're starting the procedure you know? <coughs> So I was like, okay, and then she she wrote down the 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 receipt for me that I paid, and then she was just like, um, if you can still try to get more money, get more money because you know, I came here and they wrote a letter for me to just do it with less money. So, and then as soon as I walked out, guys, like I felt like I felt so so bad, like I felt so bad. Um, I remember I took the stair staircase. I, I didn't use the lift, and then and then I just looked outside and I and I just broke down. I cried. I cried for like a good fifteen minutes or twenty minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I cried a lot, and I had to to pick myself up then and wipe my tears and just re request back home, you know. So I did that, and then guys i'm still i don't know i don't remember my the, the driver that was driving me that day but i still appreciate him because i was going through a lot then and then basically that day he 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 was talking to me making me laugh asking me about life you know a whole vibe and you it was so relaxing guys you know it helped me in a way um so yeah that's how the whole pregnancy happened and then when monday came i think i woke up I set an alarm for four o'clock and then I woke up on time and then for a good hour I was staring at the pill. Should I drink it? Should I not drink it? And then five o'clock came and I was still staring at this pill. Six, I'm staring. Seven, I'm staring. Eight o'clock, then I get um, a text message from my friend. Um, and then she was basically like, um, your partner says, um, please don't do this, don't do the abortion. Wada, wada, wada. and I'm like <laughs> you guys already know I didn't do it I was already late so that's how the whole abortion ended the whole thing ended so I ended up not doing the abortion um, so from that point I just 
I just decided that I'm just gonna keep my baby and I'm just gonna see how things go I think that's when I started to save after that I started to save like a lot 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 I, I used to save everything I got you know <coughs> and then still Jan Feb um, I was having morning sicknesses yes sorry guys my sisters my sisters <laughs> okay so i had like morning sickness i remember i couldn't even get out of bed i used to sleep with a bottle of water with lemon and ice all the time because i literally couldn't keep anything down my throat my stomach my throat or stomach i don't know but yeah i couldn't keep anything down um and then i went to see the doctor with my partner yes <laughs> we went to see the doctor and then we told him what was going on and then he gave me some pills that i needed to drink four to five thirty or four to five minutes before i eat anything and then it came to a point whereby zoe used to order food for me from Kauai, and guys i hated that food like you it was so bad it was so bad but i had to eat such food so it was buying me kawaii and everything and i was eating that because it, it settled nicely in my stomach i like the other foods you know and then um second trimester oh second trimester uh, i think it was the beginning of lockdown you know so basically what happened was me and my sisters had to go back home you know so i i went home um with my sister and zoe and then we came here in Lundi, and yeah um i feel like that's where i started to lose myself a lot when i was at home I fell into depression like deep depression and without noticing back then I didn't notice I didn't see that I was I was falling into depression you know um, but yeah yeah um, I'll still tell you more about that as we go on um, <clears throat> one of the things that used to depress me like a lot was finding out that my partner was with somebody else caught me help you know because we'd break up you know not even talk for like two weeks you know it was bad guys you know so like i don't know why people do that i am mean, like it's very it's very sneaky and like i don't know how i feel about it but i used to get like people would tell me that my partner is with you they would send me pictures and videos you know and it wasn't nice like it wasn't nice at all you know and then that that destroyed me a lot because yeah i was pregnant with this person and she's busy you know it hurts you know we weren't together by the gay so pregnant guys you can imagine you can imagine the emotions i was going through it was bad i was crying like all the time crying myself to sleep <laughs> and then yeah um that's when i i disconnected from everyone and everything you know it came to a point whereby i just stopped um posting or being active on social media i swear like i felt so alone because my sisters after some time even my sisters left um because i had already told my, my 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 mom you need to watch the first video if you want to understand the whole story so my sisters left after i told my mom about the whole pregnancy thing and then like guys a lot was happening you know i because even now what's up name a lot of people weren't talking to me a lot of people weren't checking up on me i just felt so flipping alone you know um it, it was devastating guys you know it was devastating i wasn't talking to anyone it was just me myself and i and my pregnancy 
it, it was bad man it was no <clears throat> so whilst i was disconnecting from everything and everyone i like started to develop like new habits you know um i started reading i started watching a whole lot of movies um but the part that i enjoyed more was the reading parts because it made me to enter like a different world and, and escape my reality and enter a new world and just be alive and be excited about things you know everything that was happening in the book you know it was super super nice like it helped me a lot but at night yeah i feel like nighttime was the hardest for me because i couldn't break down in front of everyone who was in the house you know i needed i needed to be happy smile be alive because um i was staying with my 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 two children my sister's kids um and their nanny so i couldn't break down in front of him i feel like that's just like me taking out my my problems out on them which i felt like wasn't right so i needed to be strong during the day i mean at night i'll just do the crying like my pillow was always wet i won't lie <coughs> yeah but yeah i'll break out i'll break down like a lot and then yo and then guys in between i used to break down a lot i think there was a time when my brothers came back too and then it was just me and my brothers and yo i used to fight my brothers like a lot i used to fight with my brothers like a lot lots you know i remember my little brother it came to a point whereby i just smashed him against the washing machine and it got so like wild and crazy in just a minute you know my emotions were all over the place and one minute i'm happy the next i'm banging people against things you know it was bad and my other brother my my other little brother had to come in and jump in and just separate us and then he shouted at me and it's just like linda the baby come on man don't do this not now you know and then after that i just fell down and i i just i cried like yeah guys it was always emotional for me you know um and i also used to fight with my brothers a lot about them having like girls around you know because I was pregnant then i knew what i was going through personally and with my partner so i didn't want them to be going through the same thing that i was going through you know the girls and me knowing my brother's um financial situation i couldn't allow them to get anyone pregnant you know i couldn't like sit and do nothing you know <coughs> So I used to shout at them like how oh, guys don't do this. I'll chase the girls away. Just go go back home You don't want to be doing this because one thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get pregnant, you know, and then a lot's gonna happen You won't be able to handle it. I'm telling you never um, And I always seemed like the pregnant annoying sister was just talkative and you know um, but it so happened um, that one of my brothers got his girlfriend um pregnant and at that point i couldn't shout at him you know i was just like okay it's, it's happening now but i did warn you i didn't even tell him that but i was just like i'm just gonna be there for you i'm gonna support you whatever you need you know so this one particular time i'm not gonna talk about the whole thing it's just gonna make the video a whole lot longer <clears throat> I think we were at at home in Amlazi. Um and then basically it was just like um Linda I don't know what I don't know what to buy, can you please help me? And I was like, You don't even have to ask, I wanna help, you know. Um so basically we were planning on going to Pav and to just buy the the baby some stuff and I remember we were just gonna use um some of Kevin's blankets and a mom um, receivers you know those lights thingy thing is for the baby just to lay on the bed yeah so he's kevin still had like new ones he didn't use you know so i told him we won't buy that we'll just buy the nappies you know we made a whole list and then we just okay like decided on the price how much money he needed so that we can go and then <coughs> think the next day um 
I had a dream. Um, I was in a taxi basically, um, and then I was in the taxi, and then somebody tried to set the the, the car on fire. Like he took a mattress, you know, and he just threw it, and I I caught it and I put it out, and I woke up, you know. And then I told my aunt, and then she was just like, um, "I'm gonna find out what that means, but I don't think it's a good sign, you know." And then the next day, we got a call. Um, the call was from the girl's family. Um, we had lost the baby. It was a baby girl. Um, rest in peace to my nephew, my niece, my niece. It was a girl. Rest in peace to my niece. I love her big time. And yeah. Um, we got a call that the, the girl lost the baby and you know watching my brother I couldn't even tell my brother guys that we lost the baby whatsoever you know I just let my dad do the whole thing I was just like dad something like this happened mom just called and I really do not know how I'm gonna tell him everything because we're literally planning to go buy things for the baby you know so sorry guys I'm getting a bit emotional so yeah and then I had another dream um, basically it was in like a dark place I couldn't see my face I couldn't see anything but just a mattress like on fire satellites I don't know how they say it but again and then I told my aunt again she was just like no something is going on something is not right Meanwhile, the the <clears throat> what you call it, the baby mama, my brother's baby mama was still still in hospital. You know, she was in ICU. Actually, she wasn't doing anything. She wasn't talking. She wasn't waking up. She was just connected to the machine. And then, I think a week later, we received another call that she has died and guys you you do not know how hard it was to just be in that whole environment I, I i avoided my brother because literally i had nothing to say to him i i couldn't even find the right words you know the only thing we just did was take walks chill and you know do whatever we do at home but most of the time he would just go away to where I don't know, you know. But I could see in his face that he was losing it. But at the same time, he was he was so strong. He was so 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 strong. Rest in peace to his baby mama and tree. Sorry to the family and to our family too because it also feels like a loss. She's becoming one of us actually when she she. she she was pregnant with one of the Bogazi children, so yeah. <coughs> um, that happened, and basically, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that some things, things like this, these we can just avoid, guys. You know, um, losing two people at a very young age must be traumatic. You know, I still feel like he needs therapy or something but get okay, as as young people my brother is like 17 he was 17 or 18 i'm not sure but he could have avoided that by listening to me you know um but we all make mistakes i made a mistake yeah, too huh? Imali. Oh, thank you one <laughs> k subscribers thank you guys Love you. <clears throat> okay, let's go on with the video. <laughs> now I'm super excited. Anyways, but yeah, guys, such things you, you can just avoid. You know, just try by all means not to get pregnant at a young age. There's some some stages of life that that you can like skip. You know, um, just watch from a distance. You know, you don't need to experience everything. 
you can experience everything by watching it but not being involved you know so just try to just not get pregnant at a young age or have a baby if you're a guy don't have a baby at a young age you know to avoid all these things because having somebody pregnant is a very big deal it's a matter of life or death you know some survive some don't survive you know and you as a partner it's also hard on you to to, to just um, accept the whole situation losing a, a baby mama and a child at the same time it ain't easy you know but if but if you avoid all of that I feel like you're just gonna be okay it's, it's such things guys we can just avoid them just stay away I don't know just stay away from pregnancy at a young age don't you need to be emotionally and financially fit for this whole process okay just get away from it <laughs> um yeah